The Keynote 522 trial is the first randomized phase 3 trial of immune therapy in early triple negative breast cancer, adding the immune checkpoint inhibitor Pembrolizumab, or placebo, to preoperative neoadjuvant chemotherapy. Patients receive six months of neoadjuvant chemotherapy, first 12 weeks of carboplatin and paclitaxel, followed by 12 weeks of AC or EC, anthracycline-based chemotherapy, all the way through, either with pembrolizumab or placebo. After surgery, patients continue to receive adjuvant pembrolizumab or placebo for a total duration of one year. The trial has two, what we call primary endpoints, two, two ways to read out whether this addition of pembrolizumab improves outcome. The first primary endpoint is what we call PATH-CR, the complete disappearance of all cancer from the breast and from the axillary lymph nodes. And we showed definitive data uh, at this conference demonstrating there's a substantial benefit. The second primary endpoint is what we call event-free survival. It's, it's, it's giving a measure of the occurrences over time, and we showed a first interim analysis here. And what we demonstrated in terms of PATH-CR is that the addition of the immune checkpoint inhibitor pembrolizumab increased the PATH-CR rates by 13.6%, which is statistically significant and, in my opinion, massively clinically uh, uh, meaningful as well. The control arm, chemotherapy alone, had a PATH-CR rate of 51.2%. The experimental arm, the arm with pembrolizumab, had a PATH-CR rate of 64.8%. We also looked at different subgroups. We looked at patients who are PD-1 positive or patients who are PD-1 negative, because in advanced breast cancer, we had shown that the benefit of immune therapy is predominantly seen in patients with PD-1 positive tumors. Interestingly enough, in this trial, patients who are PD-1 negative seem to derive a similar, possibly even higher benefit of immune therapy uh, compared to patients who are PD-1 positive. And we demonstrated different cutoffs for PD-1 testing because there's a lot of discussion about the different tests. And again, no change. It seems to be all patients, irrespective of PD-1 expression, are deriving a benefit of pembrolizumab. We also found, I think there's a very interesting observation, we found that patients with higher risk disease, so higher stage, stage three disease compared to stage two, with larger tumors, but also with auxiliary lymph node involvement, seem to have a, a larger benefit uh, from the addition of pembrolizumab. The delta, the, 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 the difference between pembrolizumab arm and, and, and the placebo arm was 20% for node positive patients, was 25% for patients with stage three disease, which is a substantial increase in, in, in the efficacy in, in those patients. Looking at the second primary endpoint, event-free survival, we have a very short follow-up, only 15.5 months, and we need to wait for those recurrences, uh, unfortunately, to happen over time. But, but, but what we can see at this point in time is the curves are, are, are showing a, clearly, a clear early separation. The hazard ratio, is 0.63, favoring pembrolizumab. The estimated 18 months disease-free survival, there's a difference of, 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 of 6%, which is again a very strong result. This is not, I would say, not yet significant because we, we assigned a very high uh, statistical boundary of 0.0001. We've just about missed that. But, but as this is the first interim analysis for event-free survival, we obviously will have a second and subsequent in, uh, planned uh, interim analysis, and the next one will, will, will come in the not-too-distant future and hopefully confirm uh, the, the EFS results. It's obviously important and, and critical, in my opinion, to, to, to learn as much as possible about immune therapy in this setting. and, and, and Having a neoadjuvant trial where we have access to tissue before and in those patients who do not respond well uh, also after surgery is, 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 is a, 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 a fantastic resource for us to understand why some patients benefit or who are the patients who benefit most and who are patients who may not benefit or who pa are patients who may not need the, the addition of a checkpoint inhibitor. So to answer your question, yes, we are going to, to, to have a, a, an extensive translational program. That, that will include things like TILS, tumor infiltrating lymphocytes, or, or, or BRCA mutation status, but will also go beyond that and will, will hopefully allow us to, to gain as much information from, 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 from these patients and from this child and better define who are the patients who benefit most of this therapy. At the moment, it seems that, that, that the benefit is seen across all subgroups and we can't single out a patient who, who at this point in time shouldn't be considered for, for checkpoint inhibitor therapy.